Welcome to the Business Standard Banking Show. AU Small Finance Bank reported a healthy set of numbers for the January-March period with net profit rising 23% to 425 crore. Sanjay Agarwal, MD and CEO of AU Small Finance Bank is with us today to talk about the Q4 numbers and the growth plans. Mr. Agarwal, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. The loan book has grown 26% uh, in FY23 and the deposits were 32, grown by 32%. What kind of business growth you see in the current financial year? So, so thank you for inviting. It's my pleasure, my honor. Uh, when we started last year, uh, it was uh, good enough time. But you know, as time progressed from May onwards, because of inflation, you know, there is a high interest rate cycles, and then of course, because liquidity was not there, you know, the interest rates suddenly were uh, grown, uh, you know, got uh, around 250 basis point, uh, repo hike was there, right? So the entire, uh, the strategy of last year, we need to redesign, rediscuss. And there, there, you know, we figured out that we need to be really focusing on our deposit franchise because that's the way the bank should do. And we are able to uh, that do done a decent job by growing uh, our deposit franchise by 32% overall year. And our CASA ratio is around 38%. Our retail deposit, which is generally CASA plus retail uh, FDRs, is around, our CD ratio is around 84%. So, and you know, and we still manage to uh, control our cost. You know, our cost remain around 5.96 for a whole year, which is as, um, as exactly as of uh, previous year, right? So, so I think overall, I'm very happy the way we have built ourselves in the last one year around deposit franchise. And of course, uh, there was an optimism in the country and there was a strong credit demand. So we would have grown with any kind of numbers, but I think there was also a rationality around it because we really want to build ourselves with more sustainable way. So our asset growth remained 26%, right? And our profit growth is also around 26% uh, on a year on year basis. So, so we're all very, uh, I would say very, uh, comforting year, very, very, you know, in, in the end, as a CEO, I'm very happy the way team has performed and the way we have done our numbers, you know, in spite of so many challenges. So I would say that this year, uh, things look a uh, little bit better, you know, in the sense that there is a pause on interest rate cycle, you know, uh, the RBA have, haven't uh, raised the rate in last policy, you know, and uh, so, so I think from and the credit demand remains strong. We as country is doing also with a lot of optimism, hard work, determination. So I strongly believe that we can repeat this kind of uh, number in this year too. You know, so so I would say anything around thirty percent. You know, whether it's about deposit growth or whether it's about uh, asset growth. You know, plus minus two percent. You know, should be there. And uh, the challenge can only be one, which is you know how we can manage our cost of money. Your loan book growth of twenty six percent is looking a little down because you have securitized some assets. Can you throw some light on that? Yeah. So you know, uh, like uh, as you know that a deposit uh, in last year was on very high rates. You know, uh, especially in quarter four. You know, uh, we were actually pricing our deposit north of eight percent, right? Uh, and there is an option uh, to borrow money from banks or do some securitization and securitization and we being in a priority sector uh, assets, you know, so there is a demand of our assets from many banks. Yeah. So we chose that way that, you know, uh, let's, uh, let's bring lower cost of money through securitization and also de-risk your balance sheet, right? right. So okay. both, both things happen when we done securitization in, in last quarter. So securitization was done with the aim to, uh, one of the aim was to lower the cost, overall cost. Yes. And of course, the rational, the growth also, right? Rational. Because, yeah, because it did risk your balance sheet too. The, now, the other part is the operating expenses, the other operating expenses, which went up by 59% in FY23. Do you see these expenses staying elevated in the current financial also? So there are a couple of things around it. One, because there is a high inflation, you know, so there is an impact on our uh, the the HR cost and of course the other related cost too. And you know, second thing is that we we are heavily investing in our future assets, which is a tech related. You know, maybe you know we want to invest more on our 
front end application which is merchant app or a super app you know we want to really want to do credit card better or qr codes or video banking where you know i strongly believe that in next 5 to 10 years uh, the banking will completely shift from as of now what we are doing is more of a, a brick and mortar right you know make next 10 years it more, more be more online right so we need to prepare ourselves for that uh, time period and we need to invest now so that's one part right and second part we are a new in our journey so we need to also build our brick and mortar distribution because uh, for next maybe 5 to 7 years so we keep on investing on our brick and mortar we, because we are just in 21 states so we need to go every state uh, make our presence felt we need to hire people you know there is a gestation period for uh, for every business to become productive or every uh, person to become productive right so i think that's why our uh, cost to income uh, looks very high but i think in the next couple of years when our credit card will become uh, profitable we we'll start monetizing our qr code business you know we'll start uh, building video banking at a scale you know and then of course the overall uh, scale will achieve you know it, the operating leverage will start playing its role so i think that's why that's the time when you know we see our uh, apex coming down the other issue was net interest margin which was very healthy 6.1% so it has slightly come down from the previous quarters when it was 6.2 and 6.3% uh, the question is can you hold on to 6% plus margins given that deposits will get repriced as we go ahead uh, I, i don't think honestly because uh, uh, there is a scenario where our cost of money uh, when i'm speaking you today you know on 25th april is already gone by 40 bips right from last year and you cannot uh, reprice or asset so quickly you know because our 66% uh, 64% assets are on fixed rate and incrementally also you know uh, there is lot much intense competition and you know as i already commented that yes. you cannot price your loan at any price because customer is also very cautious about their cost you know so so i think there would be a pressure you know uh, this year on name maybe around 25 bips to 30 bips but you know the other pool uh, of income will start coming in you know maybe because as you know we got ad1 license you know from right. quarter three quarter four we'll start building that business we have seen that there is a rationality around insurance income from some circular from ada that money will start coming to the balance sheets you know our size will go up you know and then there's some, some kind of operating leverage will start playing in so nim can be in pressure but i think overall roa we still can manage now credit card is a very important part of your strategy and yes. au has grown the credit card business steadily yes. uh, what are the medium time milestones for the credit card business so i am super excited the way uh, our credit card business has uh, has been built in last two years you know and uh, i want to share with you that you know uh, the people like visa you know which is a world renowned uh service player in this field and then of course the mastercard and pci all are after our life to become partner because our initial data shows that we are on the right path and that and, and why they why it is so because you know our average spend on card is around 20000 per month you know our card activity is, is around 84% our 50% cards are those people who are using it first time you know our 50% card is to our etb you know and we are also doing online offline you know uh, our distribution so so i think and we have already got around 5 lakh cards in 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 two year term right and we are doubling it up ne- by next year so and and i think i will break even uh, so i think this is the way the team has done till now so the important milestones are like this you know that for, for next year maybe 25 uh, year 24 25 will break even our card business you know which will be the maybe the fastest in the industry till now you know no nobody has done break even maybe in, in 5 to 6 years but we'll be making it in fourth year right so that's one milestone second you know by touching 10 lakh like cards by this year end would be another milestone right and you know if you can keep up the pace of every spend Uh, what i am just uh, told you is around 20000 which is one of the best in the industry right the activation of around north of 80% if we keep doing this kind of quality work you know our credit card will be most uh, most acceptable card in this country now another uh, important uh, 
uh, thing which has happened is that you have got an extension for another three years. Yeah, yeah. thank uh, you so, so much. Uh, so congratulations on this front, but tell us what are your top priorities in this particular term? No, so, so thank you so much. And through you and through your viewers, I just want to thank everybody there because uh, the kind of affection, love, you know, respect I got on this reappointment, it was really heartwarming. And, you know, I really want to thank regulators to keep faith on us because this is a public platform and we are supposed to do that, all those things which makes public happy and public convenient. So, you know, the, the first priority for me as in this tenure is this to really keep this faith on right you know let let more and more people trust au bank you know so right. i think that's my first priority that you know uh, we'll do everything so that our trust goes up you know our right. brand goes up and people really want to bank more and more with us and we or we as a banker also gives them the, the service at their convenience at their desire so that you know uh, we became one of the most finest franchise for this country you know, in terms of functional focus, I would say that tech is my uh, key focus area. I'm not a techie, I'm a chartered accountant, but I strongly believe that in the next 10 years, every Indian will have a data footprint. So once you have a data footprint, you know, the, the, the product offering of a bank should not be so much inconvenient, which is as of now it is, right? So whether we can build all those front end application, which makes customer life easy, we can understand them better. We can provide them very secure, reliable, convenient uh, channel to interact with bank. You know, so I think tech will be my foremost, and second would be my HR. You know, how we are able to motivate people to work with AU. You know, and to service the AU customer. And you know, also you know, can can we build an environment where we can start thinking about generational banking, you know, so, so, you know, which we call it forever banking, you know, so we are not building this bank for 10, 20, 30 years, you know, can we do something which is, which can outlast us, you know, out, outlast us, you know, as a human and, and, and can, we can proud of this institution for next maybe 200, 500 years, you know. Is not uh, converting you to a universal bank not your priority in this particular three years? In this uh, year? So, because I I am I remain cricketer, right? You know, and you know I have learned one thing in my cricketing days that your job is to perform on the ground, you know, uh, and whatever ground, whatever platform the selector has given you, you know, you should just go and express yourself and build a good inning, right? It is a job of selectors. To give you that platform or not, right? So I will leave it up to selectors the, in this case the board, board members. Sorry, selectors in this case is the board members as the a board, board and the regulators. So okay. they will figure out that whether we deserve it or not. But we are not in hurry, you know. Of course, the ne next logical uh, step to, uh, to 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 get to that level only because that attracts more trust, that gives more confidence to public in large. Right? Correct. But we are not in hurry, you know, and uh, I would say that with the time, uh, we have a lot much time with us. So, so let's build a better inning on this platform. And because, you know, uh, just uh, uh, about now, a week back, we got ADM license, right? So that completes in terms of product offering from any banking platform. So we are now at par with any of bank platform in this country. Finally, uh, there were some media reports that there was some regulatory concern on your growth. Uh, is there a communication from regulator to slow down? I, no, no, I think, uh, and, and I think it's a very good question. So, so most of we live in the, the, the banks are regulatory, uh, are, are under the umbrella of regulation, right? It's a highly regulated platform because there is a public money which gets involved here, right? So, so we and a regulator interacts on a very high level, you know, and a very, I would say very regular level. And there are so many discussion which, which happens about around everything because, you know, we are, we are new banks, we are new executives on this platform. So I think there is an, there is an advice from regulator always that, you know, you can't make mistake. You know, this is, this is a platform which, uh, uh, which desires Samazdari, Jimedari, Imandari, right? So you need to follow that line. So there are so many advisors from last six years, but they don't push for anything to be very honest. It's, it's left up to the board and the executive to decide 
what type of bank they really want to build on, right? So there is no regulatory concern, right? There can be regulatory advice, you know, yeah. a, both, both points are different, right? But you know our growth trajectory from last six years, you know, mm. and um, I got reelected for a third time. And I think we got the AD1 license, you know, so if there would be any regulatory concern, then why we, we got all those things, right? Okay. I think that answers a lot many questions, but but I, with my whole humbleness, I would say that we need to talk to our regulator on a very, very regular basis. We are new on platform. We should not do any mistakes. They come, they talk, they advise, you know, to our board, to us. And if there is any sense around it, we follow it, right? On that note, uh, thank you, Mr. Agarwal, for speaking to us. It was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success so high. I will achieve. Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.